Um, hi everyone, my name is Aisha Balde. I'm an architect currently working in Liberia, which is in West Africa, and I am working on a World Bank project. One of the main reasons why I got interested in architecture was because we moved around a lot when I was younger. So we moved from Togo to Congo to Angola, then eventually South Africa. So I was really interested in how spaces worked as well as how, um, I think in the African household, you usually have like more than one family living in those households. So the way in which the spaces also changed, you know, there were rooms that should accommodate two people, but you had six people in it. So that was very interesting to me. And I think I was also interested in like the idea of exploring and finding new realities, if that's the right word. And so that was my drive towards um, becoming an architect or my passion into architecture. I found being a woman in architecture initially to be extremely difficult. Um, and I think that was before I did my master's. Um, and I think the reason why is I did an internship um, in 2013 with an up-and-coming architectural company and I was extremely excited and they were, it was run by two males and the other interns were males and I happened to be the only woman in the office and I think by far was the most miserable time I've ever had in architecture in any office. I barely learned anything. I was constantly subjected to the meanest of words and I think I just wasn't ready for that type and actually that's what drove me to get my masters because I was like I can never be in that position ever again. I never want to feel like I'm less than because of two males and stuff like that. So that was the reason why I actually did my masters. So it is difficult <laughs> to break into it. It is very hard to get your voice across but I think doing masters at the GSA and working under Leslie who was my mentor for both years and still is to this day I think she really um, installed in me to be confident to know that what I'm taught and where I come from and my opinion matters my perspective matters especially as a black woman in this context and I think that is one of the strongest things I picked up or one of the biggest things I learned from doing masters and how to be an independent individual, how to be strong, how to be firm and how to believe in myself and that kind of makes everything else obsolete. So it makes it working with men <laughs> a lot easier, especially in a field that's dominated by men. In my master's year, I entered a competition, what was the first actually, it was the first African Architecture Awards I think ever on the continent um, and it was um, funded by St. Gobain if I'm not wrong and I applied with my Masters One project which was um, crossing borders and shifting boundaries the territory in between and I won the speculative award for that in 2017 and when I left university I then went to work for St. Gobain um, this was because I wanted to do my PhD and one of the greatest feedbacks I got from my M2 or my master's review was that I needed to really understand what it was like to work in the field because I was really interested in materials and how things come together. So I then did a six month stunt at um, St. Cobain and I learned about materials, I learned about how things come together, how two different materials become one and how things meet. And from that I then so a job opportunity in Liberia, I've always wanted to work in the West, I'm West African, so it made a lot of sense. So I joined the team in Liberia um, and I worked alongside USAID on two projects. Um, one of them was a hydro plant um, to bring electricity to about 2,000 villages and um, that was a very interesting project. I worked on it for about six months. Um, and then from there we worked on a United States government project to build uh, an army base in Burkina Faso which is still ongoing to this day and um, we're just waiting for some feedback on that. And then I am currently working on a World Bank project called the New Redemption Hospital which will actually be the one of the biggest, or I think it's the biggest hospital in Liberia and this was due to the aftermath of the Ebola crisis that took place in 2014. So we're currently designing that project and working on it and 
it's a very interesting project to say the least. So that's, that's where we're at in terms of work life. Because I am very new in the industry right now, um, but one of the greatest things I think the GSA and the Unit System Africa did for me was it made me a thinker and not an architect per se. So it allows me to diversify. And one of the greatest people I look up to in terms, well, within the architectural field is Zaha Hadid. And she is one, she's known for doing everything and anything. She does furniture, industrial design, she's got everything under her belt. And so I think that's kind of where I see myself going, where I don't feel limited by being an architect, but more of a designer, more of a thinker. So I think GSA, or the Unit System Africa, gave me that ability, that confidence to say, this is how I should think, and now, or the tool rather, to be anything, because I understand the value of my thinking, and that's the greatest, I think, greatest outcome of my masters, yeah. We need to think beyond the definition of what a woman can and can't do. We need to break the barriers. We need to change people's perceptions of us and uh, you're going to work up until a certain age and then you're going to be pregnant, therefore you won't be valuable in the field. And that doesn't work. It's, it's not true at all. We can do it all. And I think Leslie proved that to me and I feel like I cannot carry that on. And I do the same thing with others. I come back to, to the university and I actually tutor a lot of kids. I'm still connected to a lot of the kids in undergrad and I try to make sure I'm always, you know, they can always ask me a question and I can always help them as much as I can. So I think it's just important to be a woman in architecture but to help others be great women in architecture as well. Yeah, pass, pass the torch down. Hello, I'm Kat uh, Tenham. I currently work for Paragon Architects. I studied at UJ from 2010 um, and gone all the way through from um, yeah first year all the way through to Masters. Um, I joined the GSA in the start of their program. Um, and yeah, I've completed Masters, now I've gone on to candidacy and finished that um, and now a registered architect with SECAP. Hi there, I'm Kate Harris and um, I have been with UJ since 2010. I've completed my Masters in Architecture at the end of 2016 and I uh, worked out a year um, in 2014 and I was able to then go um, to graduate and I got myself a job at Paragon of which I'm now a qualified professional architect so I'm registered with SACAP and yes it's been a really good journey so far. So I'm currently working on a, a university in Durban um, and that's yeah hope, hoping to hit ground um, next year sometime so really excited about um, that project. Done a couple of refurbs, a lot of design projects within the company which is really quite exciting because they're starting to hit off so once they're ready to be seen we'll, we'll show them out. I'm currently busy with a 5,000 square meter project in Santon, right next to Sassel. Um, it's called 52 Catherine and it's going to be a commercial offices. So it's a, quite an awesome little cutoff of the site and yeah, we basically are using very awesome tight spaces and molding and forming very interesting uh, spaces with, uh, for people to work in. And uh, yeah, I've enjoyed some design work as well and um, also worked on Rosebank Link which connects the Ha train into the Rosebank Mall. And that's been a really great project for um, some urban developments as well. When I was about 16, I had a really great family friend, Jackie Howard, who was a developer of sorts. She used to buy property and just out of her own capital and um, imagination build houses. She wasn't a qualified architect, but um, I remember fondly going to sites uh, most days after school because we had like a lift club with her and my mom. And yeah, it was just so exciting to be on site and to literally see projects grow in front of you. Uh, I think there's nothing better than, you know, raising a space that, and imagining a space that has never existed before. And I think that's sort of our role as architects is to bring imagination to life. So I remember being captivated by that. And I think by 18, somewhere in between science and arts, I decided, no, architecture would be the perfect fit. 
I think going back to if you have a look at uh, stories further back, um, my dad is a developer and he always had a drafts lady in, in house. She was always standing on this board drawing it, obviously before tech um, and CAD, and she was always standing and drawing it. It was such a fascinating uh, thing that she was always doing. And I engaged with her almost every afternoon and then realizing those, those sites that my dad was then developing, um, it was yeah, really exciting and I think that's, that's where the journey started and the thoughts started, um, started rolling. So I think it's a challenge that we, that we because it is a male driven industry, um, it's a challenge that we face but it's almost something that it's a quite exciting when you, when you get in that space and you show that you're just another person and you can do it just like any man or other woman and it's exciting to be able to, to do these things and not focus on that as a male driven industry and not focus as it is a negative. So you do go to meetings where there's only men in the room and it's one of those things where it's just another, it should be just another conversation. Um, and I think in today's, today's times we should be thinking of this as a standard, standard thing that women can do anything and do more. Um, so I think it's, I've never been brought up to, to be told that I can't. So I think I'm quite driven in the sense that it is, it should be a normality and we should just continue. As you go along, um, you, you realize, yes, you might be uh, the minority, but I think when a little voice in a room full of men also puts her opinion out there, Yes, it might ruffle some feathers, and some old school thinkers might not be too comfortable with that. But I, yeah, there's a certain thrill about it where we're totally in that space where our voices should be heard. Um, history is definitely uh, written by men, mostly, and I think it's definitely our chance and part of the appeal to be an architect is to be um, someone writing and building the stories. So I think. Definitely, you know, this is the time and space to be doing it. And I think we're just really lucky that we, in the, the generation and the time that we are, because I don't think we, I don't think our mothers could have foreseen us doing this. I think beyond beyond architecture, I think that further in the industry, more engineers, um, just other consultants, other people that we engage with, um, clients, etc. I feel like it's. It is diversifying and it is getting to that um, in some roles more than others, but I think that it's quite exciting to see that it's not only architects that are changing the space, but other, other um, industries too. I, I totally agree with that. I think that um, women are very collaborative beings. I think we can bring a, a lot of coordination and a lot of collaboration. And we work differently than men and I think um, we, we're a lot more inclusive, I think, just naturally. We, we like lots of varying opinions. We, we don't sort of um, typically sort of shy away from many opinions in the room and I think that could be very exciting where we start to find um, brand new solutions that, that yeah, maybe women would just be more inclined to, to come up with. Um, I don't think we'd be reinventing wheels or anything. I just think that um, maybe there'd be a little bit less fighting, <laughs> potentially. We're, we're not uh, task driven on one path only. I think that that diversifies the, the whole um, process as well as when, when someone is jumping between and maybe new ideas pop up because of that. I think it's a really great thing that you, and also the, the um, complexity that you can jump from one project to another and then cross over and cross pollinate some of the co concepts between that. I think that's a very good um, aspect to, to have and, to, and, a, and a good approach to it. We had this discussion the other day in the office and I think it's um, a huge, a range of cultures and, and almost letting women understand, how do I say this, um, portraying to, to younger women that it is possible to do architecture and have a family. It is possible to, um, to do any, not only architecture, but to do any sort of career and still do the things that you may have that you're wanting to do. Um, I think um, I, 
it was a huge issue in terms of for me myself as well in terms of going okay is it career and having or uh, career or having a family um, and I think recently we've just had these discussions in the office as well that it's actually both you can do both and really well so I think for younger women like don't let it stop you in terms of going I can't be an architect or I can't be anything because I should be adhering to the, the social norms in terms of having children only. So I think that's a big thing that you can definitely do it all. Um, it's just a matter of putting your mind to it and if you're passionate about it, you can do anything. Uh, my name is Shakira Chahan. I am a professional architect and urban designer and I currently work as a development manager for the Johannesburg Development Agency. So I've worked on a range of projects um, across my career. Predominantly it, the focus has been large urban regeneration projects with a strong social focus. Uh, it was very early in my career that I realised that it, architecture and urban design was more um, about more than just a building um, and that we needed to consider the in-between and that's where my focus really moved to um, how do we create environments that are thriving for, for people and how do we create places of meaning. Um, some of my most notable or most loved projects um, are the work that I've done through the JDA, um, the Noordgezig Social Cluster Project, the Rotunda Park Precinct Project. Um, I enjoyed these and I, and I, I highlight them because they represent um, ideas about co-creation and really amplifying the voice of the people through our projects. Uh, another project that was really uh, fundamental in my career in terms of understanding um, relationships and the impact of what we do was the um, Mandela statue that we erected in the city of Ramallah in, in Palestine. Um, other projects that I've worked on have all had, um, as mentioned, a very strong social focus. I, I uh, believe that people need to be at the heart of what we do and that we have a responsibility as architects and as urban designers to transform lives through the work that we do. There's definitely um, a sense of having to first prove your capability um, on a project, uh, in a boardroom, uh, in a meeting as a female. There's this misconceived idea that um, architects are tough architects are um, a lot more technical and so personally my experience has been um, observing that uh, disconnect between um, what they see in front of them as a, as a female client or female architect and what the perception around the end product would be. I think that personally um, the way I've also managed my way around that is uh, observation, understanding what it is that I as a female um, in inherently in have as a quality within me and what I bring to the table and it's taught me to celebrate that. It's taught me to, to celebrate my, um, my voice and to not be afraid to use it. You, um, I've learned how to move through the layers of uh, first getting the recognition that there is a capability from my side before then moving into business. Um, and it's, I guess a part of it is also sometimes fun to see the look on the faces of, of males. Um, I've been called very um, derogatory terms and um, image-based terms that you know, often make women seem still as objects in, in, our, in our field. But as I said, sometimes it's fun just to see the looks on the faces when you're not just a, a pretty face. <laughs> With me, architecture, um, I got into it a little differently than, my, than most of my peers. Architecture seems to be a, a profession where many people know that that's what they want to do from a young age. And I was not that person. Um, but I did know that I wanted to help people. I wanted to, to make an impact. Um, and one of the qualities of my, my own that have helped me um, reach where I have reached to date is empathy. Um, I think that more than just a technical expertise or technical um, profession or science, uh, our industry is a lot about 
um, social expertise that we need to bring to the table. It's a lot about um, how do we um, create social environments and how do we activate and enable um, these environments. So I think as a female, the advantage that I've seen um, in the type of work that I do, the projects that I've worked on, is the ability to, to use these more feminine qualities of perception, um, intuition, um, the ability to be adaptable. Women are amazingly resilient and adaptable. And to use that uh, to amplify the strength of the project, to amplify the different layers of a project, to be able to recognize who you're designing for, what are the, the stories and what, are they, what have been their struggles and what is the story that they want to tell for the future. Um, the other amazing quality that women have is this ability, I think, to view difference as opportunity. Um, to be able to, to bring together a variety of players, a variety of opinions, and to allow space for all of that to, to thrive. Um, this has been tremendously valuable in thinking about how do we co-produce, how do we co-create solutions, um, even with our male, um, male peers and male colleagues. I don't believe that there should be any gender bias. I believe that uh, there's place for, for everyone in, in the field. Um, and I think each person, um, both individually and from a gender perspective, brings different qualities to a team and to a project. So my, my hope is that um, you know, women would recognize their abilities, uh, celebrate their own unique um, qualities, and uh, be brave and be bold enough to bring that to the table and offer that to, to a team, equally balanced with what uh, any other male architect could bring. Um, I think by separating gender, sometimes we also um, separate the intention of what we're trying to do. Um, and I think the intention is the same, no matter. In my role at the, at the JDA, I do um, actively try and, and change the, the dynamic and try and involve women in a lot more in the projects and across the construction process. So typically involving women in jobs that might be seen as um, you know, a male-based job, uh, hard construction work, or um, getting a, a professional team um, including architects, engineers, etc., that are um, more female driven. And we've seen the, the results of, of this sort of intuitive approach to the projects in the actual um, output when we, we on the ground and the layers of design that come through that. I want to continue working to bring equity and representation and beautiful functional design to, to everyone because I believe everyone deserves it and I want to ma continue making it an accessible topic, an accessible platform for people to engage in. Um, I am working currently to build, a, a, through a research, um, through design platform, to build that awareness and to start empowering communities to play a more active part in our profession. And coupled to that, I, I, I do a lot of volunteering and mentoring with young girls, where um, whether it's architecture and design or um, any other field, trying to mentor girls to, to help them see that it's not about being a female architect, it's just about being an architect and being the best architect that you could be. My name is Mira Judah. I studied at this university, at University of Johannesburg. Um, I studied interior design. I worked been in the industry for about seven years. I've worked at really amazing companies, Manus Design and Detail, DSGN, Paragon Interface. I've just left Paragon Interface and decided to try and do my own thing. Literally been a month. <laughs> so it's been fantastic. Um, I also decided to climb Kilimanjaro in the middle of it. So I came back from the mountain and got some inspiration and I'm ready to start my own design business. Travel inspired me to do interior design, looking at all the spaces around the world and even what we have here, it always triggered a sense of um, creativity for me and I always said that I want to do those, I want to create those spaces. I also feel that 
I, I knew I was creative and I had a creative ability. I just didn't know how to express it through which form of design. I mean, you, you, there's so many options. You can do fashion, graphic, industrial, architecture. And I just thought by doing interiors, you can do a bit of everything, in fact. I've always wanted to create spaces that people can thrive in. And once I felt that in a space, when I felt that in a restaurant or in a retail store, and um, actually felt the sense of joy and felt that I needed to be in a space, I said that that is what I want to do. So spaces inspired me as well. What people created, that is what inspired me. So I've worked on one of my biggest achievements, I would say, is the Disco One Discovery Place in Santon. And this is with working with Paragon Interface. Um, it was a once in a lifetime experience. I worked on that project for three years. Um, I dis did almost everything, design, working drawing, site meetings, client meetings, site inspections, and it, the end result was absolutely amazing. We received international awards, local awards, and to see people experience the space and want to be there every day is the most amazing feeling and achievement. Um, I've also worked on many other projects and what's great with being with the companies I've worked with is you work with architects as well. I've also worked on corporate interiors in Durban and other parts of Santon, mostly large corporate interiors, um, multi-tenants and ranging from actual interiors to retail spaces. Every corporate needs restaurants and cafes and pause areas so the design experience is vast. It is tough being a woman in this industry. Men can be condescending. Um, the people that you work with will also make you feel that way. The one thing that I learned is that after being in the industry for seven years I grew a lot of confidence, I learned about my work, I understand it now and once you have that, once you know what you're doing and you become really great at that, nothing can stop you, nothing can break you down. So when you're in on the construction site and you're the only female in the room and people look at you like what are you doing here, all you got to do is switch your brain on and tell them what you know and you start gaining more respect. So you have to stand up for yourself and it's all in here. It literally is, it's all in there and that's what's going to keep you going. So I think that there are a lot of females in the interior design industry at the moment. What I have noticed is that the people of colour, I don't see them in the workplace as much and I think that it's, it's as I mentioned before, that it is not common in our cultures to do this type of job, to be in the creative industry, it's not a norm. And I think that we need to start introducing these creative subjects in school um, to another, to, on another level. Like I know that there is design in school, but you need to introduce it at a very early age to start triggering those creative abilities in students so that they understand that they have it. And then the next step is how to convey it in a profession and how to make it a business because that is the end result. That, Ultimately, you need to do what you love and um, generate an income from it. And that is the key, and that is the key for anyone in this industry. So it's more just to educate all those fundamentals to the people at a very young age, that they understand what they're getting into. So I'd like to say to anyone who'd like to join the interior design industry, um, you know, keep your, keep your head up, stay strong. You have to work super, super hard. It's a labor-intensive industry, you have to know that. You don't get as much time as other people do, but it's worth it. It is so worth it. Um, to get those creative juices flowing is an amazing feeling, and to see the end result is even more amazing. Hi, my name is uh, Catherine Atkins. I am one of the directors of Coarch International Architects, and I'm um, the principal consultant on, on our Leonardo site here. I've been at the company for almost 21 years and yeah, I've got a great team behind me here and a, a good team of women. Hi, I'm Salome Daly. I've been working at Coarch International Architects for the last 11 years. I'm an associate and a senior architectural technologist. Um, I've also been working on the Leonardo project 
sure, from 2015, so it's been quite a while. And like mentioned, we have a great team of women on this project. Hi, I'm Angela Barnard. I'm the Senior Interior Designer for ProArc International Architects. I've been with the company for five years now and I have had the opportunity to be relatively involved in this particular project but have um, had the opportunity to be involved in many other projects with Co-Arc. So we have various uh, partners that we have uh, throughout um, uh, SADAC region and also into Ghana and Nigeria. So we do mostly um, work in Africa. Um, I've worked on our uh, IFC World Bank regional offices in Accra, in Ghana, which we completed about six or seven years ago. I've also worked on uh, many hotel projects for the Legacy Group, which is our clients here on the Leonardo as well. Uh, the Wheat Baker Hotel in, in Lagos, the Labadi Beach Hotel in, in Accra as well. Um, and we've done various small projects uh, for our partners in Botswana. I've also worked on the IFC building in, in Accra, Ghana. Um, I've also worked on smaller projects in and around Johannesburg, uh, mostly residential projects. So as Catherine had mentioned, we've had the opportunity to be involved with the headquarters redevelopment in Botswana that's just begun and we're hoping to have a really successful project go ahead there. Um, in the case of previous projects, it's definitely been a residential background um, that I've assisted with at Co-Arc International Architects and have just begun dabbling into the bigger projects and getting really stuck in and involved. When we come into the industry at first, um, we, you know, as anyone, being a male or a female, you, you're still quite naive and, and wet behind the ears. Um, so it takes a few a few years to actually get the experience within the, the construction industry. So, you know, the first, say, five or, or so years, it takes time. Once you actually find your feet and start working uh, with the upper management guys and, and the actual contractors and subcontractors, it takes time for them to actually understand that you know what you're talking about and you've got to gain their trust, their, the confidence, and you've got to be confident yourself. If you, if you, if you don't have your self-confidence at a higher level, you're going to battle. Um, but if you know what you're talking about and you've got a strong character, you'll make it. It's about self-confidence and that takes time and it, it only comes with experience, um, really. And it's, it's about people having the trust in you. And I, I think as a woman, it, it, it takes a little bit longer to build that trust and, and for people to really believe that you can do the job. Really knowing your capabilities and strengths, working to those and then not, and I think it's also important not to be, to be scared to learn when you start with a new project. You've got to ask the questions, you've got to gain that experience and it's only through asking those questions and wanting to learn and better yourself that you also then involve your team so that everyone's got an understanding of where you're at and what you're capable of. I think from a, a finishes and a softer point of view, um, just being a bit more pedantic when it comes to the level of finishes. Um, I think also as a female, you tend to notice things more than a male does. Um, and I think that starts as a little girl. Um, you know, we just think differently to men. So, yeah, it's, it's just the, the finer eye and, and the capability of seeing different things in a different manner. We have the eye for the finer detail and that, that space that you are ultimately going to experience that, that a male might not see it the way that, that we might. And, and that then follows through to how we detail things and how we finish things and how we specify. And it's about that feel and touch and, and being in a space. That is, that is, I think, it gives us a little bit of an advantage. <laughs> Definitely, I mean, you're taking into consideration what's so great about where we work is that we've got the basis of an architectural firm and I'm the lone interior designer. So you come in with your background of your technical knowledge but get the, the further expertise of the architects and combined with those things, along with, the, with that female touch, you're constantly taking an overall perspective of, of the final products. 
and making sure that you're delivering the best at the end of the day. Um, so definitely having that that, that feminine touch and that, that aesthetic feel to things adds, but with that technical knowledge, just making it superbly more practical and functional and making sure it all works together. Doing exactly what we're doing here will encourage young girls to get interested in architecture and construction and see that it's actually possible. Interior design, it's a bit easier. It's seen as a, as a female-dominated platform in which females can get involved in architecture and, and the built environment, but it should never stop. I mean, I've grown a lot just being in this company for the last five years and, and being able to put myself in an environment like this and get challenged to a different degree that just benefits you at the, at the end of the day. I think what's so great about our industry is that you basically plan something for so long and you get to see the reward at the end of the day. You are going to constantly be challenged with anything that you might do in life, whether it's this, whether it's being a lawyer, whether it's being a doctor. This, however, I, you know, we're a bit biased in terms of, of, of what, we, what we do is because you get to, you reap the reward. You literally get to see the physical, physical thing yeah. at the end of the day that you can say, I detailed that whether it be the smallest thing in a building to the biggest thing, you, you put effort and thought into that and made it work both from an aesthetic point of view, from a practical point of view, from a functional point of view, and, and that's what's so rewarding about what we do. Yeah, I also think um, a lot of youngsters that, I, that come into my realm, I say to them, you've got to be happy every morning to wake up. If in my 21 years, if I could say I've been unhappy for 10 mornings, that I, I didn't want to come to work. But in those 21 years, I get up and say, okay, I'm really not, I could rather stay and watch TV, but you get up and go, because I actually have such passion for the industry and and just getting get in the buildings built. And, and like Angela and Salome said, you see what you build in. And at the end of the day, you can look on the horizon and you say, wow, that's what I built. Also the relationships that you form with the professional team, with your your colleagues um, and being part of such an amazing project um, as we are standing in at the moment that's that's something I, I can really feel proud of. It's, it's challenging, it's demanding, it's it's just also so rewarding and I think being a woman and constantly challenged on those fronts you, you, you put your extra foot forward, you try your hardest to to prove yourself and but not only for your, well not only for everyone else but definitely more for yourself and I think you constantly you constantly grow and I think that's just what's so amazing and, and, and rewarding at the end of the day. My name is Aparna Ramani. I studied at UJ between 2002 and 2005 um, in the interior design department. Um, in those days we were at the Dernfontein campus uh, which was quite an extraordinary <laughs> experience. Um, and now I am the founder and a designer at Design Republic, uh, which is a firm that focuses on sort of boutique commercial interior design spaces. Um, I founded that with my business partner, Taryn Kelly, um, and we've been working together for about five or six years on, on various kinds of interiors. So I think one of the initial ways that we, we sort of found our niche was um, we were actually hired by Investec to, do the, to redo the mall interiors of Balfour Mall Shopping Centre or Balfour Park. Um, and that was quite a, a sort of interesting um, project for us. It was, it was quite commercial, but at the same time we come from um, sort of a background of quite handmade, um, really custom-made pieces. And in that environment, um, you've sort of got to really think about durability um, and something that lasts. Um, and what was interesting, I guess, is that we realized that often those kinds of projects were being given to um, architectural practices who were sort of seeing them as a sideline um, part of their work. And we realized for us it was an entire project, so we really could um, sort of sink our teeth into it, which was great. Um, so we sort of thought that might end up being the way we go. I think at the beginning we were quite open to seeing what comes our way. And then along the way, I sort of, I think we discovered that we were actually quite geared up and our interests lay in hospitality, um, restaurants, um, and that kind of that kind of thing. Um, so I think the first 
sort of big one was probably uh, for Glenfiddich. We did the uh, sort of pop-up bar for them in a basement in Bramfontein, um, which was really a very speed project um, and incredibly exciting. We worked with Sachi and Sachi, um, and it was part of a campaign to sort of launch, um, yeah, just the kind of, I think some of their new whiskies or sort of older whiskies, but um, newly branded. And we got to create this kind of, what would Glenfiddich be if it was a space? Um, so it was called the Independent Bar and it was really successful. Um, that was quite a highlight and in fact they loved the space so much it was supposed to last for three months that um, they ended up keeping it. The South Point, who were the landlords, ended up keeping it and it's now sort of been rebranded as the Untitled Basement where they have events. It's wonderful to see a space that you designed for a specific function um, get used in a completely different way and how it kind of lends itself to these different um, stories and, and events. Um, so that was quite a highlight and then I think something quite unexpected that happened was that we ended up collaborating with Tabot Interiors. In fact Derek Tabot was also at um, UJ, I mean Bits Tech back in the day, um, and lectured here as well and he was sort of my first design mentor and years later he got in touch with me saying there's this lodge and um, Sabi was an exciting project, it's in Sabi Sands and they have uh, four different lodges which all required different levels of work. And that was kind of two and a half years of our business, really kind of getting into the bush, um, how to work in the bush. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's really about making a plan <laughs> a lot of the times. And um, yeah, it was, it was fantastic um, sort of learning curve for us, uh, but also the kind of products we were able to make and the kind of spaces we were able to sort of um, re-envisage was very exciting. So we worked very closely with the owners um, and the teams on site. And a lot of the products, um, I think that's where we really kind of understood how much um, making local work was important to us. Um, and my, um, for me, myself, I come from, after leaving um, Vitztech, I worked at Kim H for a couple of years, um, which was quite residential focused. And I think that's something in our business that we've sort of tended to move away from for various reasons. Um, one is <laughs> one is actually the kind of emotional <laughs> labor around it. It's quite an uh, intense thing to work with um, families and people on their intimate spaces. Um, and I guess the more important thing is that we're interested in spaces that people can engage with, a broader um, sort of market can engage with. So um, yeah, so it was quite it was quite um, Kim H was quite a learning curve, but I I definitely got. Um, I sort of figured out what I didn't love about residential interior design. Um, not that we didn't say uh, yes to that right at the beginning when we started our business. Um, and then I was lucky enough to work for Sylvia Reck and Leslie Carstens for about three years, maybe just over. Um, and I think that's where I really fell in love with the sort of handcrafted, um, yeah, and, and what can be, I suppose, environments that really um, subtly um, sort of encourage different experiences and it's not this kind of overt um, sort of glitz and but, but still there's an element I mean there's always a feeling of luxury and beauty um, and it really is about the craftsmanship and the kind of slow um, yeah the making of those spaces um, so I think it was quite a natural progression for me actually for Design Republic to have some of those elements my business partner comes from a more commercial side and I think together we we found a little kind of um, a sweet spot, I guess, where I'd sort of push my agenda and she'd push hers and, um, and sometimes there's a little bit of magic, I think, that happens there. So, I mean, it's incredibly exciting. I, I think, firstly, um, living in South Africa at this time um, in a creative industry is probably just, uh, I mean, I've lived in the UK and had experiences of what, um, what it feels like to be in a more sort of established and developed country and I would say um, it's actually creatively less exciting you know there's a lot less sort of tangible matter to get your hands into and so I think being a young creative female um, in Joburg especially but I would say South Africa as a whole of Southern Africa um, allows you a lot of space there's a lot of space to figure out who you want to be um, and I don't think that the rules um, you know, I, say, I would say not even that long ago interior design was a kind of this is what you are, you do fabrics and you do them in houses and you do it in this way and I feel like that's not the truth anymore. I think um, we've really expanded our notions of how, um, how we can work and how, 
um, yeah, how we can really find our own voices. So I would say that if you have any inkling or desire to, to work as a designer in South Africa, you should follow it. Um, it's incredibly rewarding, not without its challenges, which are huge, but I would say that being a designer hasn't just, it isn't just about the work, you know, it really has shaped me as a person and um, yeah, for that I feel very lucky. I think any industry that allows you to kind of engage um, socially um, and to be part of a sort of current experience um, and yeah, sort of get a sense of what's really happening in your city and to shape it in some way um, is, is a reward, you know, so yeah, absolutely.